Okay, so in this video, we're going to finish up those last three examples on section 3.1, the increasing and decreasing functions. Okay, we're on example six, where we're trying to find the open intervals on which f of x is equal to x squared plus one over x is increasing or decreasing. Okay, so let's remember what it is we wanna do. First of all, we need to find the first derivative of this function, all right? And then once we have the first derivative, we want to find our critical numbers. The critical numbers are the places where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative is undefined. Okay, and then we're going to create our intervals. And what's going to happen is our critical numbers are going to split the real number line up into intervals. Okay, all right, then we want to pick some test points. We want to pick one point from each interval. We're going to fill it into the first derivative, and we're going to decide whether the value we get is positive or negative. If it's positive, then we can say that the function is increasing on that interval, and if the value we get is negative, we can say that the function is decreasing on that interval. Okay, so let's start this guy. We are going to take the first derivative of this. Now, I don't know why, but I like using the product rule instead of the quotient rule, so I'm going to change this into a product. Like so. And now I'm going to take the first derivative of this, and that means we're going to have our first x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the second, so this is going to be negative 1 times x to the negative 2 plus our second, which is x to the negative 1, times the derivative of the first, which is going to be 2x. Okay, now let's clean this up a little bit. So we're going to have x squared plus 1 times negative x to the negative 2 power plus 2, because when we multiply these two and add those exponents, negative 1 plus 1 is going to give me a 0, so we'll have x to the 0 here. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factor out that x to the negative 2 power. And this is going to leave me with negative x squared plus 1 plus 2x squared. Now, if you're using, well, I was going to say if you're using the quotient rule, but um, if you turn this back into fractions, this is the same thing we would be doing if we had gotten the common denominator, okay? And our common denominator is, in fact, right here. All right, let's clean up stuff on the inside. We're going to have negative x squared minus 1 plus 2x squared which is going to give me x to the negative 2 times x squared minus 1. And then if we turn it back into the fraction that we know it is, we will have x squared minus 1 divided by x squared. Okay, so remember the things we're looking for is where is f prime equal to 0 and where is f prime undefined. Okay, all right, so f prime is undefined when we're dividing by zero. So when that denominator is equal to zero, we know f prime is undefined. So I'm going to take my denominator there, x squared. I'm going to set it equal to zero, and now I'm going to solve it. Well, to unsquare something, you just need to square root it, and the power and the radical will cancel. And then we have x equal to 0, so this is a critical point. I mean, I'm sorry, a critical number. Now, f prime of x is going to equal 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. Because it doesn't matter what the denominator is, it can be anything other than zero. If the numerator is zero, then this whole term over here is going to reduce to zero. So I'm going to take the numerator, 
I'm going to set it equal to zero, and now I'm going to solve this equation. So we'll add the one to the other side. And now we'll square root both sides. Don't forget to put the plus minus in there because when you introduce the radical to the problem, you do need to have the positive or negative root. Alright, so the radical and the power will cancel. And then the square root of 1 is 1, so we have positive or negative 1. These are also critical numbers. And that means that this time we actually have three critical numbers. Okay, now let's look at this on the number line just so we can see what the intervals are going to be. Remember, the whole number line here represents negative infinity to positive infinity. And if we graph our critical numbers, we'll have 0 right here, positive 1 is to the right, and negative 1 is to the left. So it looks like our intervals are going to go from negative infinity to negative 1, from negative 1 to 0, from 0 to positive 1, and then from positive 1 to positive infinity. All right, now I am going to erase all of this so that we can do our test points. Okay, so I've gotten rid of all the other stuff. Um, our critical numbers are right here. We've got negative 1, 0, and 1. There are our intervals up here on the top, and here is our first derivative. So now it just means that we're ready to pick our test points. Okay, now the test points, remember, they're just numbers that are in each interval. So I need to pick a number that's in the interval from negative infinity to negative 1. In other words, I want to pick something smaller than negative 1. And I'm just going to pick negative 2. But you can go crazy and pick negative 1,000 if you want to. Right. f' prime of negative 2 is going to be negative 2 squared minus 1 over negative 2 squared. This is going to give me 4 minus 1 over 4. This is 3 over 4, which is positive. And so that means that on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1, f of x is increasing. Um, and I'm going to hang on to that for just a second. And we're going to write our answer all at one time instead of writing them individually. All right, my next test point, I have to pick something here in between negative 1 and 0. Well, there aren't any integers in there, so I guess I'm just going to pick negative 1 half. And we're going to plug it into our first derivative. So we have negative 1 half squared minus 1 over 1 half squared. Well, this is 1 fourth minus 1 divided by 1 fourth, which is going to give me negative 3 fourths over 1 fourth, which is going to give me negative 3. This is a negative number. I'm going to put my little positive sign up here and my negative sign up here to keep track. All right. Now I want to pick a test point here in between 0 and 1. And again, there aren't any integers in there, so I'm just going to pick positive 1 half. That means we're going to find f prime of positive 1 half. Well, this is going to give me 1 half squared minus 1 over 1 half squared. This is going to give me 1 fourth minus 1 over 1 fourth. This is going to be negative 3 fourths over 1 fourth, which is going to give me a negative 3. So that's a negative number, and that means everything in this interval is going to be negative as well. And finally, I want to pick something in this last interval going from 1 to infinity, so we're going to pick something bigger than 1. And I'm going to pick 2. We have f prime of 2 equal to... 2 squared minus 1 over 2 squared. This is going to give me 4 minus 1 over 4. This is 3 over 4. That is a positive number, and so this interval is going to be positive. Alright, so where are intervals increasing and decreasing? We can say 
f of x is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1, union, positive 1 to positive infinity, and decreasing on the interval negative 1 to 0, union, 0 to 1. This brings us to example 7. We're going to show that f of x is equal to negative x to the third plus 2 is decreasing over the entire real number line. Okay? Alright, let's start off. We're going to find the first derivative of f of x. That's going to give me negative 3x squared. And then the derivative of 2 is just 0. So here is our first derivative. We need to find our critical points. Um, there is nowhere that this is going to be undefined, so we're just going to take negative 3x squared, and we're going to see if it's ever equal to 0. When I divide both sides by negative 3, I have x squared equal to 0, and then we can square root both sides here. And then the power of the radical will cancel. The square root of 0 is 0, so I only have one critical number. And it's going to be 0. And if we picture this on our number line, so all of this represents negative infinity to positive infinity. My only critical number right here is 0. That means my intervals go from negative infinity to 0 and then from 0 out to positive infinity. <coughs> okay, so I only have two test points I need to pick this time. Alright, I need to pick something over here in the interval between negative infinity and 0, some number that's less than 0, and I've been picking uh, negative 2, so I'm just going to go out to negative 10. And we're going to plug in negative 10. So we got f prime of negative 10. This is going to be negative 3 times negative 10 squared. Well, negative 10 squared is positive 100, and positive 100 times negative 3 is going to give me negative 300. This is a negative number. That means that this interval is going to be negative over here, and f of x is decreasing. So we're halfway there because we wanted it decreasing on the entire real number line. We've got it on the left half. Let's see if it works out on the right half as well. I need to pick a test point over here between 0 and positive infinity, so I want to pick a number bigger than 0. And I think I am going to pick 5, just to be different. So we're going to take 5 and we're going to plug it in. And that means we're going to have negative 3 times 5 squared. Well, let's see, 5 squared is going to give me 25, and 25 times negative 3 is going to give me negative 75. This is also a negative number, and that means that our function is decreasing over here on the right-hand side as well. So we have just shown that f of x is decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to 0 and from the interval uh, 0 to positive infinity, and that is the entire real number line. Here's our last example, example 8. This is an application problem. A national distributor of pet toys determines the cost and revenue functions for one of its toys to be c is equal to 1.2x minus 0.0001x squared, where x is between 0 and 6,000, and r is equal to 3.6x minus 0.005x squared, where x is between 0 and 6,000. And we want to determine the open interval on which the profit function is increasing. Okay, please notice that we are given the cost function and the revenue function here, and our question is dealing with the profit function, which we don't currently have.
Okay, so we have to go back to an earlier lesson from this section where we learned that the profit function is actually equal to the revenue function minus the cost. We're actually going to have to subtract these two so we can find out what function it is that we're dealing with. Okay, so our profit function is going to be 3.6x minus 0.0005x squared minus 1.2x minus 0.0001x squared. So we have 3.6x minus 0.005x squared minus 1.2x plus 0.0001x squared. And that means our profit function is going to be 2.4x minus 0.0004x squared. Okay, now that we have our function, let's go and get that first derivative there. P prime. The derivative of 2.4x is just going to be 2.4 and the derivative of 0.0004x squared is going to be 0.0008x. All right, we need to get our critical numbers. That means we need to take that first derivative and set it equal to zero because this one is not going to be undefined anywhere. We can subtract the 2.4 to the other side You got negative 0.0008x equal to negative 2.4. And if we divide that negative 0.0008 to the other side, we will find out that x is equal to 3,000. And this will be our critical number. <coughs> Now, you may not need the number line to picture these, but I am very visual, so I like to draw these out. 3,000 will be somewhere in here. And so our intervals are going to go from negative infinity to 3,000. Actually, it's going to go from 0 to 3,000 because our domain was restricted here from 0 to 6,000. So let's go ahead and restrict that domain this time because we're not talking about the entire real number system. We're only talking about a portion of it. So zero to 6,000. And then this interval over here is going to go from 3,000 to 6,000. Okay. And now we need to pick, looks like, two points. So we're going to need to pick a number in between 0 and 3,000, and then a number between 3,000 and 6,000. So I think I'm going to pick x to be 1,000. All right. That means that p prime is going to be 2.4 minus 0 0.0008 times 1,000. And that is going to give me 1.6. This is a positive number. That means this side of the interval is increasing. And then I'm going to pick a number over here between 3,000 and 6,000. So I'm just going to choose 4,000. And these are my test points, by the way. Then P prime will be equal to 2.4 minus 0 0.0008 times 4,000.
and this is going to give me negative 0 0.8. This is a negative number, so over here it's going to be decreasing. We're supposed to find the open interval where the profit function is increasing. That's going to be right here where it's positive. So we can say that P is increasing on the interval from 0 to 3,000.